made animals, in order to get things from them, we're not loving them either. So there's a lot of areas where we're not loving under those circumstances. And, and we can't expect to have a relationship with God while we're doing all those things. Because God created all those things. You, your soulmate, others, their soulmates, all other living creatures. All, everything was created by God. You can't expect to have a loving relationship with God while we're being unloving with all those things. And we're never going to be loving with all those things while our fear is the most dominant thing in our life. Because whenever compromise is put in our face, where we have to compromise what we're doing or love, we will always, if we honour fear, we'll always do what the fear dictates. We won't love. We'll always do what the fear wants. The fear has become our God for the majority of us. And the only thing that's going to reduce that is our, and improve our awareness of our own fear is truth. And what do we feel, the majority of us feel about truth? We feel, just give us enough. Isn't that how you feel most of the time? Don't give me too much, just give me enough. And, uh, and myself and Mary are often finding now, people ask us to spend a bit of time with them or whatever, and they want to ask us some personal questions. We, we generally don't do that much anymore, but um, they want to ask us personal questions and we say to them, like, are you ready to know the truth? And they say, yes. And you start a conversation 10 minutes in, there's no willingness to know the truth generally at all because everyone has a fear threshold that's usually quite small in fact most people are not willing to be challenged in any way with regard to their fears and so because their fear threshold is very small that you are only ever going to get to know a little bit of truth so it's going to be like dribble 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 type of progress now if you dribble progress there's a good chance if you've started, let's say you started progressing towards God when you're 40 or 50 and you decide to dribble the progress, then you're definitely going to die before you're at one with God if you decide to dribble it. You know, it's like, it's like drip, 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 you know, like, you know, eventually the glass will get full but only after many millions of drips. Right? Is that what you want? And while that's all happening, of course, there's pressures, external pressures on you, trying to get you to conform to old ways of living, old ways of belief systems and everything, all these pressures going on. And sooner or later, you probably want to conform because your fear will dictate that you do. So this problem with the fear is a huge problem for many of you still. Many of you are completely unaware of what you're afraid of, which is the biggest problem. Because if you're unaware of it, you're never going to feel it. And the only way you can let go of fear is by feeling it. You can't let go of it any other way. It's the same with grief. The only way you can let go of grief is by feeling it. The only way you can let go of anger is by feeling it. The only way you can let go of your addictions is by feeling them. That's the only way you're ever going to let go of anything, is by feeling it. And if you're unwilling to feel the fear, the grief, the anger, the addictions, then progression is not possible. And you can hear a lot of things that you agree with, but you won't have progressed. You'll be the same as you were years ago. Barbara, if you want. It's coming down the side if you keep Um, AJ, I'm sitting in that area of um, unawareness of the fear and not wanting to um, go there. So would the best way to start would be to ask God to show me my true self. Would the fear be revealed in that? Most of us don't want to know our true selves. So where's the best way to start? Being honest. And just saying to yourself, I don't want to know my true self. Mm. And then what would you do if you were really wanting to progress? You'd say, I don't want to know my true self. Obviously, I'm going to have to know my true self sooner or later. What would you do next? Um, well, I'd, I'd try to engage a relationship with God so I can... A relationship you know. with God won't be possible while you don't want to know yourself. So what's the point in trying to have a relationship with God when you don't want to know yourself? See, see what I would do is this. If I worked out that I don't want to know me, I don't 
really what you're saying is you don't want yourself. You don't want to be yourself. You don't want to know yourself. You don't want yourself. This is a common problem, right, for many people. You don't yeah. want yourself. If I felt that and I knew that to be true, my very next course of action is, okay, I know that the only way I can change is by feeling. Humility tells me that. The only way I'm going to change on this belief is by feeling it. Feeling that I don't want to know myself. Yeah, feeling you don't want to know yourself. So, And then when you feel you don't want to know yourself, you will then feel why. That will be the subsequent result of feeling that you don't want to know yourself. You will then feel why you don't want to know so yourself. So the why won't come before the, the feeling initially. No. See, many of you are trying to put the why before the feeling. Yeah, we were You're having this discussion doing this all last the time. Night. And I keep saying to you, there is a feeling above a feeling, not a thought. Right? Many of you still are trying to have thoughts before you have feelings. So, so what you do is you go, okay, I know I'm not progressing, I'm not, not doing this, I know I'm not doing that. I wonder why that is. And you use your mind and you're trying to work out why. No, no, stop, just stop all of that. Feel that you don't want to know. Feel it. How much you don't want to know about yourself. Feel that. Feel how angry you are about having to know yourself. Feel, feel those feelings. Well, I think the first step for me is not wanting to know myself, is that I'd have to let go of my control to know myself first, wouldn't I? So feel your control. Yeah. How, feel your control. Sit down with your control every day and notice every single time you try to control. Feel it. Feel the level of your control. That's feeling your addiction. Feel your addiction. Feel the level of control. Feel how much you want to control. And when you feel it, you'll work out why you want to control. And you won't work it out here because the, thought, the feelings will just come up. Oh, I, just, I want to control because every time I don't get to control, I'm trying, you, know, you work out that you're trying to avoid some emotion. One might be only one emotion you're trying to avoid. And you'll work it out because you've felt that you want control. Many of you don't even realise you want control. I'm putting, I'm putting to you that every single one of you who are single in the audience today, unless you're below 25, every single one of you in the audience today who is single below 25 wants control. That's one of the reasons why you're not with a partner, because you want control. Right? Many of you who are with a partner right today still want control and you've got a partner you could control. You took many years to find him or her. Right? And now you've got him already, you're not going to let him go because you won't control. Right? They are your ideal partner because they are the person that gives you everything that you want. Right? Many of us are not willing to see that. We're not willing to see that. We're not willing to see what's going on in inside ourselves in reality. Right? So, so, how many of you are ladies who are single? Just out of interest, yeah? Right. It's almost you know, probably 40% of the audience, maybe. That's a lot in a percentage, isn't it? Uh, 40% of the audience. Have you ever given consideration to the fact that you're not very pleasant to live with? Have you given consideration to that? Okay, what do you want to do about it? You see, at the moment, you're letting your fear dictate that. The reason why you've become unpleasant to live with is because of your fear. It's only because of your fear. It's the things you're afraid of facing inside of yourself, feelings you're afraid of having inside of yourself that would cause that to occur. Right? Feel that. Feel that. Allow yourself to feel it because when you feel it, you'll realise why. When you realise why, you can change. But you're not going to change until you realise why. You see, feel what you what what you currently don't want. See, many times I say to people, and you, many people have asked this question, maybe I should just develop my relationship with God more. Well, you can't develop a relationship with God when you don't want to know yourself. And you don't want to be truly honest with God about yourself. So it would be far more, clo from God's perspective, God will feel far, far closer to you if you honour the fact that you don't want yourself you don't want to feel yourself and you feel how much you don't want to. In that moment, you'll be closer to God than you've ever been before, actually. 
Right? You don't have to do anything else other than feel that in that moment. But what I see most of you trying to do is you're trying to work out what's going on before you feel. Your feeling of fear will stop you from even working it out. You need to feel your fear first and the less let go of some of the fear and then you'll work it out. But many of you want to know before you feel. Is that not a problem for the majority of us in fact? We want to know things before we feel them because we want to know that we're not crazy, we're not stupid, that it's a real feeling, that we've justified having a feeling. We even go to other people, you see, I have this feeling because. Who cares why you have the feeling? Just feel it. Like many of you still get involved in this discussion. You, how, how have you felt this week? I felt, I felt this and I realised that it's because of this and because of that and because of this that I feel that. Well, what about you? So, oh yes, I had, this, I had this thing come up and I realised that because of this. Because, what's going on? Why are you doing this for? It's a waste of time because you're not feeling it. If you felt it truly, you wouldn't need to do it, in fact. You wouldn't even need to discuss it with another person if you felt it truly. You would just feel it. We are addicted to having other people be involved in our own emotional work. We are addicted because we want certain things from them. We want them to make us feel safe. We want to know that because someone else is going through it, it means that my feeling is valid. We want to know that because someone else is experiencing a similar thing or they've had an emotion this week, that that means I'm allowed to have one too. And it's all just rubbish actually. It's all just our fear dictating our further progress. And what are the fears? They are the fears you don't see. The fear of other people's approval. The fear of acceptance. The fear of not having any acceptance. The fear of not having other people like you. The fear that other people don't agree with you and you're the only person on the planet who actually feels that particular thing. The fear that you're stupid, that you're strange, that you're crazy, that you're weird. That you're All of these fears are the fears that you try to make go away by having somebody else come along and have a chat with them about your feelings. You're making all, so, so you're actually in addiction dealing with your emotion. Now, can you really ever deal with an emotion while you're in addiction? Of course you can't. You're only going to be dealing with the emotion that your fear is allowing you to deal with. So for, for many, I feel what's going on is this. Our fear has become like a prison, right, of our own making. So you imagine, for many of us, this is what it's like. This is what it's like. We've got this prison. And our fear, by the way, dictates how big the prison is. So the less fear we have, the bigger the prison is. In other words, we have more freedom. The more fear we have, the smaller the prison is. In other words, it's like a solitary confinement cell when our fear is very, very large. And we have stuck ourselves inside of this. We are constrained by this prison that we have created, that our fear dictates. And while that remains the case, you will only allow yourself, even when you discover divine truth and you discover the way to God is a through emotional change, you will find that you will only allow yourself experience the, to experience emotion that the boundaries of your fear will accept. So if your fear is very large, your cell will be very small and the boundaries of your fear, that what your fear will allow you to actually process emotionally, will be very small, very tight. You'll only be able to get into certain things emotionally and work the way through them in that boundary. If your fear is, you know, is less than that, then your boundaries might be larger, but you still have boundaries. And everything outside of this boundary, this is what I see for many, is everything outside of the boundary is the real stuff that's going to help your relationship with God.
Feeling that is going to help your relationship with God the most. Feeling this and anything inside of it will only do what? It will only let you have a relationship with God that's constrained by exactly the sound boundary. That's all it's going to do. Your whole life, for the rest of your life, will be dictated to by what your fear will allow you to experience. And unless that changes, unless something changes where your fear and what it allows you to experience grows, nothing will change in your life. And so what I see many of you doing is you allow certain emotions. So that might be an emotion of grief. So you, you, know, you, you cry that much to that boundary. And that might be the direction of your grief. You cry to that boundary, you will cry no more. Because your fear is telling you to stop. And you honour your fear before you honour anything else. So you don't honour God there, you don't honour love, you don't have faith, you don't honour humility, you don't want more truth in that place. You only will allow yourself to experience grief to that point. That's it. <clears throat> Some of you will only allow yourself to experience grief if, if it's a spirit with you. In other words, you're experiencing the grief of spirits who are atta- attracted to you or attached to you before you will let yourself feel, feel any of your own grief. So, you know, for many of you, all of the crying that you've ever done, it wasn't yours. That seems to be a waste. All right. And the reason why you do that is because your fear will only let you do that. So it's your fear. You want somebody to be with you all the time when you experience an emotion. And if it's not a person, you prefer it to be a spirit person. And so you let yourself process that way. So some of you, a complete denial of this level of control that you have over your lives with your fear. Divine Truth 